Madam Chairman, friends, it is an honour to join with other parliamentarians in expressing my support for Camp Ashraf in its quest for freedom and democracy. I've watched over the last decade as the situation in Camp Ashraf has developed to the situation we find ourselves in today. I've watched as the American forces provided protected person status to the residents in 2004, only to stand by and watch the residents being attacked. I have watched as the Iraqi forces took over the security of Camp Ashraf in 2009, promising that they would not violate the residents' protected person status, only to attack the camp in July of that year. I have watched as the United Nations has designated the residents as asylum seekers with all the legal protection that this status affords them, only to have the Iraqi QUD's forces, stooges, attack them in April of last year, murdering another 36 unarmed civilians. I have watched as the Iraqi government has denied collusion with the Iranian regime whilst allowing Iranian intelligence officers to man 300 loudspeakers, as my colleague and friend has said, on the perimeter of Camp Ashraf. I have also watched as the men and women of Camp Ashraf have stood up to all these abuses with strength, courage and dignity, never flinching in the face of such adversity. Friends, if only the international community could be as brave in the face of Iraqi and Iranian aggression. If only the United States had the moral fortitude that the people of Camp Ashraf had. If they had an ounce of this spirit, they would immediately remove the PMOI from the terror list in the United States of America. The United States of America recently declared further sanctions against Iran but stop short of announcing a desire for regime change. The United States must stand side by side with the Iranian people and the brave people of Camp Ashraf and declare that they seek a regime change. They must let the religious fascists in Iran know that eventually they will be held accountable for the 120,000 political prisoners which they have murdered. We have watched as the Iraqi government has time and again broken its promise to the people of Camp Ashraf, to the United Nations and to the wider international community. It is time we declared loudly with the same bravery as the people of Camp Ashraf that enough is enough. It is time that UNHCR stood up to President Maliki, Malachi and declared that the residents are being collective, collectively designated as refugees. The UNHCR must now place the president, protection of the residents of Camp Ashraf ahead of conciliating this Iraqi government that has shown nothing but contempt for the UN and international law from the very beginning. Friends, it is time that the UNAMI uh, AMI stepped forward and played its part as the driver in this humanitarian crisis. On Christmas Eve of last year, the United States signed an MOU with the Iraqi government declaring a roadmap to a peaceful solution for the residents of Camp Ashraf. Within days, there were rocket attacks on the camp, and Iraq had started to breach the MOU. Yet we have not heard enough words of condemnation from the United Nations. The United Nations must not stand for this. It risks its international reputation when it signs deals which are broken within days. It is time that the UN declared publicly that it will not allow the Iraqi government to breach its commitments to them and to the people of Camp Ashraf. So, friends, in conclusion, it is time for the international community to support the freedom-seeking people of Iran and the PMOI. The only way to deal with a brutal regime is to show the same courage and strength and resilience as the people of Camp Ashraf. So, whilst I 
certainly applaud what my colleague Tony said uh, earlier. In particular today, we should concentrate on seeking respect and protection for the safety of the residents of Camp Ashraf. Whether in Ashraf or in Camp Liberty, they need our help. I emphasize that protecting Ashraf is indeed our humanitarian duty, and I join with my colleagues in not resting until their permanent safety is guaranteed. Thank you. Uh. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Today, I am going to be speaking from the heart of the experiences with Camp Ashraf. But first, I also thank you for this opportunity to return to the United Kingdom and once again work with the United Kingdom. Recently, we had the plot to kill the Saudi ambassador on American soil, led by the Codes Force. Matter of fact, our State Department stumbled around after that was discovered, and the first thing they came out and said, well, we need to see how high up in the chain of command this plot went before we can determine actions towards Iran. As a former anti-terrorism officer, and I think everybody in this room will agree with me, a plot of that depth is not going to be taken place unless it's approved all the way up to comedy. Well, democracy was already there with the PMY and they were working it. So they had good reason to welcome us. They worked closely with us. They showed us where various threat sites were. They provided us intelligence reports. They also surrendered their weapons to us. In exchange, they were given protected person status signed agreements, and they were given cards. These are two examples. Saba and Majid signed those cards, and they carried them with them. They carried them with them on 2011 when they were murdered on the, the desert of Diala province. And I will pass this so everyone can take a look at it. Madam uh, Chairwoman. And I think you can look at these people and realize these are not the faces of terrorists. And I agree with everything said. It is totally unacceptable. Already mentioned were the attacks in 2009 and 2011. And I can honestly state the real terrorists and gunning down innocent people. There is something else I noticed when I was watching those videos. And it's hard for me to say, and I usually choke up when I'm saying it. And the commitment they had to each other is outstanding and really warrants this is an organization that we must save. Also, there is a lot of confusion being created, and I call it clutter, when the reasons they're being called a terrorist organization. They are not terrorists. But this clutter I am talking about, all the slander, well, they're a Marxist-Leninist organization. Well, they're not, but what does that have to do with anything? And everything I have drilled down, and between my two tours of duty in Iraq, there was another individual there, General Dave Phillips. Dave had the same experiences I did. Every time a rumor came down, he immediately went out and discovered whether it was false or whether it was true. And not once did he find a rumor to be true. One, I'll give as an example. The PMOI are still recruiting at the training at this location. I went to that location immediately, had my Marines ready to come charging in. It was a work site where Iraqi workers were allowed to stay overnight and get some rest for the next work day because if they came in, uh, in and out of the camp on a daily basis, capture them, and then they would kill them. They were being given protection. These rumors, we were always proven to be false, and we never found one that was true. There is one request I would like to make, and that is, if possible, 
a joint letter to our own State Department saying, we believe some action needs to be taken. State Department, you need to start moving. About two weeks ago, about two weeks ago, Louis Free headed up a letter signed by 21 people, generals, former Democrat national chairmen, former governors, Republican leaders, and he sent it to the State Department, Secretary of State, and he also sent it to the Secretary of General. But when you have Tom Ridge, the former Director of Homeland Security, again, Louis Free, you have John Sano, former Deputy Director of CIA, the list goes on, four-star generals, three-star generals, the former Attorney General, they're all saying the same thing. It's easy to see what is the common denominator, and yet the State Department thinks they know better. In all honesty, they're trying to play politics. The law was written and revised in 2004. State Department is ignoring it. As pointed out, they're ignoring the U.S. Court of Appeals. In July of 2010, it was clearly stated, you got six months, State Department, to fix this. That has been 19 months ago. The United States was late in getting into World War I. I acknowledge that. We should have come in a lot sooner. The amount of time that we spent in World War I was just about the same amount of time that the State Department has had to make one decision and get them off the list. Yet, Secretary Clinton, Ambassador Dan Freed, says we're working aggressively on this. I am trying to figure out the meaning of the word aggressive. <laughs> And what I recommended in Berlin, and I would also recommend here, is if it's to quickly engage and find a solution to a problem, State Department is missing it, and they really need to do a field tour over to the Pentagon and find out what the word aggressive really means. <laughs> in closing, I really thank the opportunity to come and speak. It's a real pleasure, and it's great to see people on both sides of the Atlantic having the same interest and, and also to prevent a, a, a situation that we will always look at in shame through history that there wasn't enough done. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Madam Chairwoman, thank you. Thank you.